Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to take a look at how we can go about fixing this DPS comp meta that we've seen in Mythic Raiding uh, over the past expansion or so. If you follow any type of PvE content creators, you obviously know what I'm talking about. And it's the fact that raiding counters at the high end tend to prefer having a large number of ranged DPS over melee. Uh, for the next raid, um, I will be playing, I will essentially be a flex player, playing either melee or range, depending on what's better for the fight. But being a pure melee DPS is basically a thing of the past, unless you're the sole demon hunter in the raid. So I wanted to take a look at how this problem or how this meta has shifted over time and what we can do or what Blizzard can do about fixing this. So if we look at the end boss raiding counters over the past two to three expansions, basically since Mythic raiding came out, so Warlords of Draenor, Legion, and the first two tiers of BFA, the number of melee DPS in both WAD and in Legion were fairly consistent from raid to raid. Now, obviously some raids and some bosses did prefer more melee um, over others, if we look back at probably the most melee friendly fight in, well, ever since Mythic Raiding was created, it is Gul'dan, where the world's first skill consisted of 9 melee DPS. And then the least melee friendly boss encounter, which is the most recent one, uh, would be Unat, which only had 2 melee DPS in on the world first skill. Now, between these two extremes, there's plenty of fights that have either 4 or 5 melee, um, maybe even 6, but that number does seem to fluctuate between 4, 5, and 6 for the most part, until the most recent raid. Now, when it comes to a balanced roster or a balanced raid comp um, from a DPS perspective, there's quite a few things to be taken into consideration. There's essentially two ways, two main ways of determining whether you want to take a melee DPS or a ranged DPS. First one, which is probably the easier of the two to solve, is simply taking a look at their damage profile. Historically, melee were always very good at single target damage. Uh, granted that they did have, or assuming that they had a pretty good uptime on the boss, maybe 95% or more. So if you put a melee DPS and a ranged DPS next to each other and just told them to hit this boss for, you know, four or five minutes, typically the melee DPS would do more. And this is because obviously melee DPS are more punished by mechanics. So where if you have a ranged DPS and you put a dot on them and tell them, okay, you need to move out of the raid before this wears off and then move back in, the ranged DPS won't lose that much damage because they're already positioned um, in a way where they don't have to move that much. Whereas you, if you put the same dot on a melee DPS and tell them that you need to move out, then move back in, they will lose a little bit more damage. So this is why historically, uh, melee DPS were slightly better, better at single target. Obviously across the board, there were some extremes where some melee were really good at single target and some range were really, really bad at single target. But um, if you look at the middle of the pack, typically, the melee were slightly better at single target and ranged were slightly lower at single target. So then what are range good at if they should be lower on single target? Obviously the past two raids showed prime examples of what range DPS are good at. And that is cleave damage. Cleaving targets that are not stacked on the boss. If you have, if you think of a boss like Grong, for example, the single target fight, so in theory should be better for melee, with two adds spawning every two minutes. But the adds will always be away from the boss simply because if you kill them next to the boss, then it obviously gives the boss rage. So this means that it becomes a cleave fight for ranged DPS where they can dot three targets. Whereas for melee, you will either lose your entire boss damage if you move to the adds, or if you stay on the boss, you obviously don't get add damage. So those situations are where ranged DPS shine. Or if you look at a fight like Unat, uh, the most recent end boss, this is another boss that heavily favors ranged DPS simply because of the damage profile that's required on it. Obviously the mechanics also have a huge play in this, but just the damage profile also caters towards ranged DPS. 
Range DPS have toolkits, um, or most of the range DPS have toolkits that allows them to convert AoE or cleave damage, uh, two, three, four target cleave into more single target damage. If you think of Shadow Priest, uh, Warlocks, Elemental Shamans, um, I'm not sure about Boomkins, but most of the ranged DPS have, have some sort of benefit on single target if they can cleave multiple targets at the same time. Whereas the melee DPS typically tend to shine in AoE situations. So if you have a bunch of adds that spawn and walk into melee, melee DPS have the type of abilities that will kill those very, very quickly. Um, if you think of bosses like in Uldir, the third boss, forget his name, but you had basically two types of adds, the ones that just spawn in set locations, and then all the little adds that spawn in random players, and then you move them into melee and mass grip them and AoE them down. So if you have a lot of small adds that come in, melee DPS will be a lot better at dealing with those. Whereas if you have two to three big adds that spawn and maybe are not allowed to be brought into melee, then ranged will be much, much better at those. And over the past two raids, especially, we saw the second type of adds, where you have two to three adds spawning, uh, or one, two, or three adds spawning, and typically you don't bring them into melee. And this damage profile heavily favors ranged DPS, whereas melee um, are more benefited from having either AoE or pure single target. So this is the first way they could balance raid comps, and if they want to see more uh, melee DPS, then this is a good way of going about it. If you think back to Uldir, Uldir had some very, very punishing mechanics for melee, because basically all the mechanics in Uldir revolved around your melee being spread. And what this does, it hard caps the number of melee you can bring to a fight. If you think of like Fetid Devourer, for example, you had to spread with debuffs. So if you had like six melee, you simply didn't have enough space to spread if like two or three of your melee had the big circle. Um, so this capped the number of melee you can bring. Because if you think about it, it essentially just limits the amount of space you have around the boss. The front of the boss will never be accessible to melee DPS because of the tanks. The two tanks are basically always at the very front of the boss. Um, and that space is either restricted due to have the boss having some sort of frontal ability or simply the fact that as a melee DPS, you don't want to stand in front of the boss because you don't want your abilities to get dodged or parried. So because of this simple reason, uh, basically half of the boss's hitbox, some of them a little more, some of them a little less, depends on how they're designed, is essentially off limits for melee. So you have half of the boss's hitbox or a little more to deal with. And then on top of that, you typically have one or two healers, depending on your healer comp, will also want to stand in melee. Like if you have a Holy Paladin, they essentially have to be in melee. Now as a Holy Paladin, maybe you can stick them to the, the front part of the boss's hitbox near the tanks, because if they get parried, um, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Whereas if you have a melee DPS constantly at the front of the hitbox, his damage might be slightly lower. This brings us to the second type of the second way that Blizzard can go about fixing melee and having more melee on boss fights. And that is simply mechanic design. Now, this is obviously the more difficult way of going about it because you need to come up with creative mechanics that are challenging for melee, but they don't punish you enough to where you actually reduce the number of melee you bring to the fight. And this is something that we have not seen in a long time. Melee and ranged have completely different toolkits for dealing with mechanics. If you have shared mechanics between melee and ranged, typically one of the two, uh, more often than not ranged, will be a lot better at dealing with those mechanics than melee will. For example, if we look at a mechanic like Jaina Avalanche, as melee, dealing with Avalanche is much more difficult than a ranged DPS dealing with Avalanche, even though it's the same exact mechanic. And this comes down to a few reasons on this specific mechanic, either that um, Avalanche obviously is based on travel time. So the closer you are to the boss, the faster you need to be moving so you don't get hit. Um, 
And obviously the second one is that if you get two melee or three melee um, or two melee and a tank who get it, the space that you have to move around is much more restricted than if you were in ranged DPS. But on the other hand, um, if you have mechanics that require either constant movement um, or something of that sort, melee will be a lot better at that. So if you think of reactive mechanics, maybe um, like a third of the boss encounter room or two thirds of the boss encounter room, all of a sudden an AOE flashes and second and a half later that will go off. Melee will be better at dealing with that because uh, melee is equipped to deal with mechanics reactively where ranged DPS, I feel like are more equipped to deal with mechanics proactively. So as a ranged DPS, you always focus on, okay, where am I positioned? If this mechanic comes, then am I in a good spot? Whereas with melee, it's more, okay, I know the mechanic will be coming, so I'll keep an eye out for it. But then once it comes, that's when you decide on what you're going to do with it. So um, I believe that raid mechanics and boss abilities should be split between having melee specific ones and range specific ones. And obviously from a design point of view, this is very, very difficult to do because essentially you will have to create either twice the number of mechanics or you know increase the number of mechanics that a boss has just because you do have split mechanics between melee and ranged rather than shared ones. A good example for what a melee specific mechanic would look like is if you think of Jade Fire Master, um, so the second boss for, for Alliance, third boss for Horde out of BOD, you have that phase where it ports you up and you have to face the images um, or you take damage if you're not facing them when they charge through you. So let's bring that mechanic down to a boss fight, let's say on Grong, rather than just having the, the random smash that you have to move out of. Let's put that mechanic on Grong and make it so the dash, where the, the image dashes through, is simply an area where you take damage. It either one-shots you or it does like 80-90% of your health. So if you put that mechanic on the melee, Whenever that happens, melee will have to reactively look, okay, it's the first image, second image, third image, and you have to dodge all of them while moving around the boss. This mechanic does not impact the ranged DPS at all, unless you're standing in melee, and at that point, it's your choice to be there and have to deal with that mechanic. And this mechanic would be slightly challenging for melee, um, obviously because you have to react every so often, maybe every 30 seconds, every 45 seconds, or whatever they decide, that would make your melee DPS have to pay attention to something and reactively move, which is what the melee DPS are good at. Now, this mechanic, like I said, would not um, affect your ranged DPS at all. So having mechanics that are melee specific and having mechanics that are range specific do make sense. And we do see some range specific mechanics, but try to think about the last time you saw a mechanic that was designed to be dealt with by the melee. And it hasn't happened in a very, very long time. So obviously this would take a lot more work on the part of the devs. So maybe for end bosses, it could be something that they look at doing where they have melee and range mechanics. And for the rest of the bosses, they look at a more balanced approach to encourage you to bring melee either by, the, by their damage tuning. So if they do a little more single target damage, or if you happen to spawn AOE adds, then your melee will be better. Whereas if you just spawn one or two big adds, then your range will be better. So having a combination of taking a careful look at the damage profile that is required for every single boss and looking at the melee um, or at the mechanics that are on each of these bosses and having a balance between either your melee doing slightly better damage or designing the mechanics in such a way that your melee are either able to deal with them or you're not so punished from bringing melee that you simply will end up with like one or two or three melee on a fight. Thank you so much for watching this video and this topic is obviously very important to me because I do prefer playing melee over ranged DPS. Um, in the future, I think I will be playing both simply because we do see a heavy shift in the meta and if you if you look at any of the historic melee dps who used to play melee for expansions and expansions 
most of them ended up either rerolling to like demon hunter to be the sole demon hunter or rerolling to some sort of ranged dps just because of the way fights are designed and the way damage and uh, class tuning has happened over the past expansion so again thank you so much for watching this video and if you have any ideas of how blizzard could improve this balance between having a healthy melee comp and a healthy ranged comp uh, make sure to leave them in the comment section below i'd love to hear them um, or if you just want to chat make sure to join my discord i'm always available there as well